Coming up on today's Airborne, NORAD reports some 75 restricted airspace incursions per year. Boeing employee glass air project nears completion. And the Concierge Defender will debut at the National Sheriff's Association Conference. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. NORAD says that it's going out to intercept pilots who have violated restricted airspace more than once per week and it's costing the taxpayers millions of dollars. Most intercepts are violations of TFRs, which can crop up on short notice. Stephen Armstrong, a NORAD official, said that the mini pilots are not aware of a TFR being posted, particularly when flying from uncontrolled airports on a flight that requires no flight plan. But showing what appears to be a lack of understanding about general aviation, he told the Associated Press, quote, they just take off and do what they want, end quote. Pilots who violate restricted airspace are usually in for a session with local and federal law enforcement officials. While few face criminal charges, the FAA can take action up to the suspension of airman privileges. We at a and urge all pilots to check for TFRs before you fly. Just a quick call to FSS will do the job. With midterm elections just around the corner, we can expect numerous TFRs. A unique Glass Air S2 kit plane being built by a team of Boeing engineers in Everett, Washington, was rolled out last week, sporting a fresh Boeing paint scheme. It could make its maiden flight in the next couple of weeks, according to a project team member. About 30 to 40 Boeing volunteers, in conjunction with the Boeing Employees Flying Association, have spent the last three and a half years on the aircraft during their off hours. Several EAA tech counselors and a previous glass air builder, who also works at Boeing, have provided assistance. The test pilot for the sleek composite single-engine aircraft will be one of the team members who is a part of Boeing's flight test group. The project team is planning to bring the aircraft to EAA AirVenture Oshkosh this summer. With a bunch of engineers and a pro test pilot all working on one project, there have got to be some funny stories. Would anyone at Boeing like to share them with us at a and We'll tell you how to do that after this break. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-V today with the Benmix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-V out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or a podcast, send an email to news spy at aero news.net. The Defender LSA law enforcement aircraft, which rolled out in March, will make its public debut at the National Sheriff's Association Conference on June 23rd through the 24th in Fort Worth, Texas. The aircraft is a derivative of ICP Aviation's Savannah S sport plane produced in Italy. It's equipped for law enforcement missions by North Carolina-based Concierge. The company says the Defender is a turnkey law enforcement solution offering a variety of sensor options including daylight, thermal, and low-light cameras. An integrated GPS provides target coordinates and aircraft location. The panel includes scene steering and object tracking, integrated street-level moving map, aviation-specific law enforcement radios, and an integrated video recorder. Concierge claims the initial cost and operating cost of this aircraft and equipment combination are substantially lower than a similarly equipped helicopter. Each week, we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Left and 
Sometimes things go well, and sometimes they don't. An open baggage door caused this twin velocity pilot to have a tense few minutes, and it was also caught on camera. Search Velocity Emergency on YouTube. Cessna's progress on their new Citation CJ3 Plus is moving quickly, and they've just rolled out the first production unit at the company's Wichita, Kansas facility. The new aircraft was first announced on March 20th of this year, and it's expected to receive FAA certification during the second half of the year. The aircraft includes all new interiors with a redesigned cabin and cockpit and a new pressurization and new diagnostic systems. The CJ3 Plus features the Garmin G3000 avionics suite, which includes turbulence detecting weather radar, TCAS 2, advanced terrain awareness warning systems, and ADSB capabilities. The CJ3 Plus is also compliant with a significant aspect of announced next generation air traffic control requirements. The CJ3 Plus is expected to receive single pilot certification and has maximum seating capacity for nine passengers. Airborne is brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back with more news. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. Three new Expedition 40 crew members were welcomed aboard the International Space Station when the hatches between their Soyuz spacecraft and the station were open last Wednesday. Astronaut Reed Wiseman, Soyuz Commander Max Sarev, and European Space Agency astronaut Alexander Gerst are slated to spend 166 days aboard the orbiting complex. They were greeted by three other astronauts who have been on the ISS since March 27th of this year. The Soyuz docked automatically as the complex was flying at an altitude of 262 miles and located off the coast of northern Peru. The tenure of Expedition 40 will include a variety of research projects focusing on human research, biology and biotechnology, earth and space science, physical science investigations, technology demonstrations, and educational activities. The hardware and samples from many of these experiments, along with crew supplies and cargo, will arrive on four different resupply vehicles scheduled to visit the station during Expedition 40. After a long winter and spring dodging the Utah weather, Skycraft's SD-1 Mini Sport has completed flight testing successfully by meeting all the performance requirements needed for SLSA certification. The SD-1 is unique in the light sport arena because it's a diminutive single-place plane that touches the high end of LSA performance while only burning a bit over two gallons of fuel per hour. Based on flight testing reports, Skycraft will be updating the interior layout of the aircraft. The most significant change will be the installation of a more fully integrated Dynon cockpit display. Completion of flight testing is a significant achievement in Skycraft's ultimate goal of certifying the SD-1 Mini Sport as an SLSA aircraft. Skycraft says they are very close to achieving this goal. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.